Okay, so I have a demo. We're going to create this currency converter. We have three files that we're going to create. Start program, it contains the main method. I already have the J frame in it. We'll have to add the J panel to it. Our converter panel extends J panel, and that is essentially where all of our components are going to go. So this currency, the word currency converter, that is a J label. Convert US dollars, that is a J label, J label, J label. These guys down here are called J buttons, and this is called a J text field, not a J text box. Uh, so we'll add all those com those components to our converter panel. We'll add the components to the panel. Um, we'll set up click listeners, and then we'll have the action happen inside of this converter panel. And then I also have a currency converter class. And this is my business logic. So my it actually does the conversion. Once I grab the dollar amount out of here, that dollar amount will, will be passed in the constructor for the currency converter. And in doing that, conversion, it will set instance variables for euros and British pounds, and we'll be able to use the getters from this currency converter class so that we can get those um, values and place them back inside the text box. Um, our project is going to be organized um, so that our main method is out inside of the default package, and I already have the packages created in Eclipse. I'll run through how to do that real quick in case you need a quick reminder. Our converter will go inside of or excuse me, a panel will go inside of the view because it contains all the components. And then our currency converter with the logic in it will go inside of our model package. So let me flip back over to Eclipse. And you can see that started. <coughs> so let's just talk about the currency converter class real quick to begin with. Three instance variables. I've used some um, uh, fill variables for the conversion rate. And then I have um, default no arg. I have a constructor that takes in the, do the US dollars. And um, I have a method called do conversion. And this is one of my specialized methods. Down here at the end, I have um, the implementation for do conversion. And it simply takes the amount that was set for US dollars, multiplies it times the um, euros rate. And, does, and then sets that value into euros. And the same thing happens for British pounds. So that it does all the conversions for me. Now the cool thing about this is if I decide to grow this program and maybe add in the yen, I could just create a new instance variable, create a new final variable, and then add in the calculation down here to the end. And I wouldn't have to do anything else to my getters or my setters. I have this um, commented out right now so that you can see, so that I remember to tell you about the do conversion. But whenever I set the US dollars, I'm going to automatically have it do the um, conversion for me. Oh, yes, I said that right. Whenever I call this constructor, I'm going to automatically have it do it for me. Same thing if I just use the setter to set the US dollars. So maybe I create a, a default no arg instance of currency converter. Whenever I call the set US dollars, it will set US dollars, but it will also do the conversion for me. Um, I do not have a two string in this class. I could if I um, needed it. Now to start looking at the swing and base, uh, I've started with the start program class. It's got the main method in it. I have a blank J frame. Um, I don't have a name for it. I set the size to 250 by 250, so these sort of like a square. And then the default um, Right over here is my window. Um, this X on one of the machines, I think it's over here on the right-hand side, this allows me, whenever I close this, it will kill the whole program. So you can see up here in my Mac that the program is running. Um, and I can kill it by going, you know, file, quit the program. Or I hit this red X, now it will close the program as well. Um, and then finally, it's set visible to be true. And again, that's going to be one of your final components that you add in there. So now what I need to do is I need to create all of the components that go on the inside of this frame. And I'm going to do that inside of a J um, panel, excuse me. And I call, it's going to go inside my view. I like to call, um, give my panels logical names. So I'm going to call mine a currency panel. And I don't need anything. I don't need a public static void main. I already have one. Right away, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it extend J panel so that it will treat it like a J panel. Import it. And let's go ahead and I'll put in a constructor. There it is. 
And then finally, I'm going to flip back to start program, and I'm going to go ahead and add this panel to the frame, even though I don't have anything on it yet. That way, whenever I make changes to the currency panel, I can see those changes appear whenever I run the program. So now I oh, could also import J panel. Now I can add the panel to the frame. And if I had anything on the panel, which I don't yet, it would display here. So let's put something on the panel. Remember instance method, instance um, variables for classes are always private. So let's start with a, um, a label, call it title. And I did put these in here so that I can copy them. I'm not going to have you watch me type all this. It's painful to watch. Now, messing around with spacing and formatting, that's one thing that you'll have a little bit of time with to get it to look right or not, if that's not really your thing. And then I'm going to add the title to the panel. And just by doing that, I should now see there is my label showing up here. So <clears throat> my um, I declared and initialized a label called title. This is the default value that I've set it with. And then I finally have added it to the panel. There are multiple ways that you can do this. So you can also declare your, I'm going to do another label for the um, dollar text. You can also just declare them, and then you can initialize them inside of your um, constructor. Somebody do have to have that new. No, it's semicolon. And then um, after we initialize it, then we can add it to the panel. In order to help keep things straight, one thing I recommend that you do is anytime that you're using a J label, you try to end with text or start with text so that you know that it is text. And anything that is a field, a text field, you try to end that with the word field. So that whenever you go to get information out of it, you can that you're getting the information from the right place. So here I've declared and initialized my dollar field. I've set it to have a length of five. And right now it is not, there's no field on my, on my panel yet, so I still need to add it. There we go. So you can see the nice thing about adding that J panel, even if it's blank now, it lets us kind of test to see where we're at. The other cool, uh, or I don't know if it's cool or not, but this is using a flow layout. So it's just going to continue to flow until it runs out of room that is so that it breaks something onto the next page. So that's why I put these, these blank lines up here so that it will um, kind of center a little bit. Um, otherwise, you may end up with something like this. Again, you can adjust the layout size, the, excuse me, the window size. Um, let me show you the J button, and then I'm going to copy a couple of these so I don't have to type them all out. But we'll start with a calculate button. Again, anything that's a button, try to have your variable name end with the word button. And then this, inside of this constructor, it lets you put in the text that you want to appear on the button. And then, of course, I need to add the button. to the panel, and there it is. There's my bit. You can see it doesn't do anything. The whole thing doesn't do anything yet. So let's make, let's add um, a copy from here real quick and grab my euro. Save a little bit of time. And my adding it to the panel. And then I also have a clear button. I'm going to grab that as well. Oh. 
try to keep everything together. So if I need to make any changes, I can go find where it's at really quick and easy. Now the order that they're put in inside of the instance variables doesn't matter. What matters is where they are added. So if I added the clear button way up here, you can guess where it's going to be, right? It's going to be right up there at the top of my panel. So here it is. There's the clear button up here because I've added that before I've added the title. So we'll adjust that because we don't want the clear button up at the top. And we want it next to the calculate button. I think I have my interface ready to go. There it is. Okay, so let's put some, um, let's put these buttons to work for us. Let's create an inner class. So outside of my construct, but still inside of the class, let's create an inner class. And I'm gonna give it a good name. I'm gonna call this one a calculate button listener. And it is going to implement the action listener interface. So this action, using this action listener, spelling matters too. on this case, I almost always mistype it and leave out this E. So if you mistype it and leave out the E, it will ask you to create this class or create this interface. We don't want to create it. Definitely don't want to try to recreate that ourselves. Instead, it should ask us to import the action listener. There it is. And once I import it, next it should ask me to add in those unimplemented methods. So here is the, that handshake agreement. If I add in, if I implement this interface, I have to use its method. I have to implement its method. On the flip side, by implementing this method, now I get something that will listen to my calculate button. So I'm going to go ahead and put this button listener on the calculate button. Because right now, just because I've created the class doesn't mean that it's attached to the button. I have to tell the button which um, class or which method should be ran once that calculate button has been clicked. So create a new instance of our calculate button listener. Spelling matters. E, there we go. Button listener. And then on my calculate button, now I have to add the action listener and add in that calc button listener. So now that listener is listening on that calculate button. So I'll just do a quick sys out inside of here. So you can see that whenever that button is pressed, that calculate button is pressed, it is writing down here to our console the word pressed. So it's running that method every time that one is pressed. Now the clear button, we don't have any kind of listener on it, so it's just click, we can click it till we're blue in the face and then do anything. But the calculate button has something listening. So whenever that calculate button is pushed, what we wanna do is grab that value inside of this text field and send it off to our currency converter. And once that currency conversion has happened, we wanna pull back in that Euro value and stick it right here. So let's do that really quick. The components that come out of our fields are text. So even though they, um, we need the dollar amount, we need the double value, we have to get it out as text. And then we can just parse that into a double or into, um, gotta remember what I'm doing, double dot parse double. And then our string that goes in as our parameter is the value that comes out of that text field. So I will call this just amount. <clears throat> All right, now we got that amount coming out. Let's pass that amount over to our business logic. We'll call it CC for short. Now I'll use the constructor I have already created that accepts the dollar amount. I do have to import this because they're in different packages. This uh, currency panel is inside the view package. Our currency converter is inside of the model package. So I gotta tell it where to find it. And once we grab that, or once that value has been set, now I need to get the value back from euros. So I can use my get euros method. And I can set the text for my euro field. So euro field, 
set text to be the value that we get back from the object. And it's giving me an error because it says, hey, you need to pass in text, but instead you have passed in a double. Well, we can easily fix that. We can do a couple different things. We can um, just add in a blank space and that will convert it to a double, or excuse me, to a string. Or because we're fancy, we're gonna use the code and I already had wrote down, so I wouldn't have to try to remember it. So for the euro value to be set, so let's see where we're at. I'm gonna launch it, and let's put in a dollar. And if I press calculate, it's gonna grab that value out of there and pass it over to our currency converter. Our currency converter does the conversion, sets the instance variables, and then I just simply call back the the euro, uh, the get euros to get the value. And down here, you can see there is my little euro symbol. Now, probably the only other thing I would do to this is to format it to two decimal places. And you know how to do that, right? Yes, of course we do. So create a new decimal format. that always shows the last two. Import it. There we go. And then we'll apply a decimal format to our number. Isn't that cool? Look at all the things that we've done in just this one line. But you saw how I took it piece by piece, but didn't try to do it all at once. Calculate, there it is. Now my clear button still doesn't do anything. So let's implement that. Okay, so I'm gonna make another inner class for my clear button listener. I don't have to import it because I already have, but I do have to add in those unimplemented methods. Now, if the clear button is pressed, what do you think should happen? I think the dollar field should be empty. So we'll set that text to an empty string. Um, a little hint on this, by the way, is um, it might be tempting to put a space in here. I have ran into a lot of issues with people that put spaces in there that whenever they go to type in it again and pull the text out and convert it, they'll end up with a number format exception because that space will be there. So if you leave that space out, that will help um, alleviate some of those um, issues. And we'll have the euro field, we'll have that text set to the empty string as well. Let's test that, let's see if it works. And it won't work because I haven't put any listeners on my clear buttons. So just because you create the clear button listener doesn't mean that it automatically works. We have to add that clear button listener. Uh, and we have to attach it to the clear button. So I'll do that really quick. And spelling counts. And then finally add that action and listener to that button. There we go. Now, obviously, if you attach the wrong listener to your button, like if we tie, if we did the submit button listener instead, that's what those methods would run whenever that clear button is hit, which is not one at all. So let's test it really quick. There we go, cool. Uh-oh, did you see what happened down here? Number format exception, empty string. So I press this button, I just did it again, and there's nothing here to parse. So when something happens, or whenever you try to parse something that's not a double, you get this exception. We can plan for that. Let's put a try catch block around this, and let's catch that number format exception and plan for it. So instead of getting this error, let's, um, Let's reset things back to just an empty field. I'll clear my console so you can see that I fixed the air with this try catch block. So we'll type in good, clear works. Let's type in a letter. Oh, there we go. So now it just clears and look, my console stays nice and clear still. <clears throat> so as you saw back in my other implementation, I had buttons for the British pound. And I had, yeah, that was it. I talked about doing it for the end too. But we can easily add those components in. Actually, why am I copying from here? I've got them over here. 
here is my British pounds. I already have the implementation pieces inside of my currency converter class, so I don't have to add anything there, but I'll add these two um, components. Don't have to do anything else with my learners, but I do. I don't have to do anything else with my dollar. Instead, all I have to do is add in another row to Great Britain pound, Great Britain pound field. Set text. So I need to set it to get the British pounds value. Got to change that into a string. And I wrote down the code for the British pound symbol as well. There we go. And then to get it so that it goes to two decimal places, we'll go ahead and we'll format the double that comes back. Oops. There we go. I should try to think. Oh, I got one other component I do need to do, and that's to do with the clear button. See how I cleared those two, but I didn't clear this one. One thing you could do to make this even more efficient, because um, I would have to write the same thing inside of my clear for my for my um, catch block and also for my um, clear button listener because I could just pull that out and um, set this into its own oops, yeah into its own method. So rather than do this each time, I'm down here create just a method probably spelled correctly. Void. I'll call it reset fields. And whenever that reset fields, that just sets all of them to be the same. Now we don't have to update it multiple places. You just call this method. So it resets the fields whenever the clear button listener is pressed and whenever the number format exception is found. All right. So my advice to accomplish this is you learn how to deal with interfaces by creating interfaces. So take time, recreate this one, give it a shot. All the code is here. Um, you can pause the video as you go through. And um, there are tons of interfaces and examples in your textbook. In the programming exercises in the back of chapter 10 in your textbook are a lot of great, simple projects that you can just test off with um, to check it out. Now next week, I will create a interface like this that has the form fields, but we'll also add a J component that is an image, um, and we'll adjust the image based on what the user types into the form field. So that we'll get practice with creating the image and adjusting the images, making it, making it um, smaller or making the, the item more filled in, less filled in depending on what they put in there. So that will be the plan of attack for next week. Um, again, I encourage you to go back through here and recreate this on your own using um, the videos so that you have some practice putting them in there. I will add the swing components to copy. I'll add that to our um, Blackboard course so that you can grab those components. You don't have to recreate them. Um, but give it, a, give it a try, use your textbook, use the video, and you should be good to go.